good morning from the OK Portugal farm. We've got all action stations going on right now. Our neighbor Joaquin's here with one of his tractors and he's helping us with something. In last week's video, we used the wood chipper to basically process all of these branches and we were left with a bunch of sort of small twiggy bits and stuff like that that wouldn't go through the wood chipper. So Joaquin has brought his tractor and he's brought a flail mower and he's gonna try and see if he can smash them up for us. It's a box that's got a chain that spins around inside. So the power of the tractor runs this chain and that train is whipping around like a flail and just smashing all of the branches and bits of wood and stuff like that into tiny little pieces. Almost like a wood chipper, but a little bit more brutal. And it's already absolutely demolished this whole pile on this side. Now that is pretty awesome. Those piles were absolutely huge. They took us like most of the day to try and sort out. And this tractor is just absolutely flying through it. And it's only been a couple of minutes. This whole pile's gone. That one's just been smashed up in about 45 seconds. And uh, I don't think this is gonna take very long at all. Now you may be wondering why we're doing this to all of this wood. Uh, watch last week's video, it'll make a little bit more sense. We've basically got this, um, this olive grove. We were doing some pruning and the olive grove prunings, we, we couldn't uh, burn them because we don't have any rain. We've got high fire risk at the moment. And so, uh, I got a wood chipper and the wood chipper processed most of the stuff but it just couldn't deal with the really small bits. They just didn't have enough weight to go through. So this is Joaquin's idea and it's working very, very well. I got to stand pretty far back from this thing because uh, there's huge bits flying out and it's pretty dangerous. Mooi te boon, mooi te boon. Wow. Uh, Quer que Joaquim tire uh, dois ou três aqui, ali e ali. Fica okay. só uh, okay. baixo da, da olida. Sim, sí, sim, sí, ok. That was so fast. I mean, it took like what? Um, I don't know, five minutes? Amazing. I mean, to put all of that through a wood chipper would have taken ages. And now that he's got the flail mower on, um, I think he's just going to go between the olives here and just cut the grass. Obviously, this grass is a fire risk. So it's going to get really dry. Over the next week, we're going up to like 27, 28 degrees Celsius every single day. It's going to get super hot here. And uh, yeah, just a little spark could be a real problem. And to do that by hand with a lawnmower is just a ridiculous task, especially when the grass gets this long. You have to go back and forth, back and forth over the same piece over and over again with a mower and, uh, you know, until it kind of mulches down and breaks down. And with this tractor, it's just like, he's just charging ahead. I normally mow very sort of neat rows and lines and things like that. And obviously this is very rough, rough and ready, but uh, it's definitely going to help slow the spread of any fires or anything like that. It's going to make the farm a lot safer. Um, and uh, yeah, summer is just around the corner. And the last thing that we had one is a fire starting in this olive grove. Olive leaves, especially like fresh ones, are just full of oil and they burn really quickly. So, you know, we could lose like our entire olive grove if we don't basically keep on top of this grass. So this field over here is full of a whole bunch of different things. We've got like different clovers, we've got wheat. Uh, I think we have some wild oats. We have all sorts of stuff. And we have more down in that direction. We have more down in this direction. And we have more over there and more in the front. And that's been grown for Joaquin sheep. So he's going to be coming in the next couple of days. I'm guessing in the next couple of days because the fields are getting really dry. And he's going to be cutting those down. He's going to be hay baling them, turning them to bales to feed his sheep in the summertime. OK Portugal, he's wearing the OK Portugal t-shirt. He's got a couple of them now. Oh, better get moving out the way before I get hit in the face with something. So yeah, if you've watched our previous videos, you'll know that we were struggling with what to do with those branches. And uh, this solution was just so quick and easy. This is the best thing about like, you know, finding out from the local farmers, finding out from your friends, uh, like better ways to do things. Because there's always people telling you that you should do this or you should do that. And then there's people who have lived this life for a long time like Joaquin. And he knows the best way, the easiest way, the quickest way to basically get the job done. So Joaquin was just saying that he's going to um, swap out the tractor for another one. And he's going to come and he's going to cut this grass. And Joaquin's farm's just over there. And he's brought his other tractor. So this one over here is a Ford 3430. I'm guessing this one's going to use less fuel. It doesn't need that much power. It's going to start down there. Okay. Okay. I think he was telling me to close the gate. 
So I've just got to see if I can catch up with him because he's doing all the interesting stuff. This is basically a giant cutter. And if you've been watching our videos, you know that every year the same process happens. So it's like a giant blade, looks very ominous and it's attached to the engine of the tractor. So there's a gearbox in the back of the tractor called the PTO. And uh, that thing basically spins and gives power to this. Look at that thing. And then it basically goes along the ground and just cuts everything. Wow. Now I'm guessing you didn't use this cutter in the olive grove because obviously we had all of those sticks and twigs and things like that and you know you don't want to get that stuck inside the machine and he's got a lot of work cutting all of the fields around here to uh, basically make his hay bales the last thing he wants is his machine to get broken normally it's very fast going but I think he's just doing the edges here first and then uh, once he goes in the straight lines it's a lot quicker and just look at this thing just fly through the grass amazing and you can tell it's not his first radio. Joaquin's a superb tractor driver. And the tractor that he's got here now, this one, it's got a smaller engine. It's obviously powerful enough to um, power that cutter, but it's gonna use less fuel. It's also much more nimble. So let's just have a look at this stuff. Now this, this particular section over here doesn't grow as well as the rest of the farm. Uh, it's kind of shorter. In some areas, it's all the way up to shoulder height. So this is much lower. Uh, there's many more sort of flowers and things like that in here. Um, so I don't think that this is like the high quality stuff, but still as you can see we've got some wheat in there and um, It's gonna make for some good sheep eating It's always a sad time of year when I have to say goodbye to all of the flowers and the grasses and things like that I don't know I just love the way the farm looks when it's all green and just full of blossoms and things like that and uh, Yeah, we're about to reach this really dry and dusty time of year again But I still love summer so I can't complain Earlier on, he was using the flail mower to chop everything up. And this one over here cuts very neatly. Now, if you can see here on these bundles, it just slices right through them. It's like a pair of barber's clippers, just massive. And here we're gonna get a close up of exactly what they look like in action. Because Jokin's about to come past. Right through, no problems. And there we go, that one's done already. It's really quick this. Struggling to keep up actually. He's gonna move on to this big field over here. So the field just in front of the house, just next to the vineyard. Uh, this is the one that he's busy cutting right now. And the grass on here, well not grass, shall I say wheat, looks like it's in really good condition. It's quite thick, it's quite tall. And I think his sheep are really gonna love this. You can see how tall it is there. You almost can't see Joaquin on his tractor. So we have quite a nice arrangement going on. Joaquin wants all of this grass for his sheep. And uh, me, I want my fields to basically be planted with things like clovers and stuff, things that put nitrogen back into the soil. And so Joaquin does all of that. And he obviously cuts the grass and bales it. Then I don't have to worry about cutting the grass and I don't have to worry about a fire risk in summer. It works out awesome. It is swelteringly hot, even though the weather report says it's 29, it feels way hotter than that. Uh, especially when you're standing still in the sun filming stuff. But uh, yeah, we're nearly done on um, sort of two of the main parts. Uh, Joaquin's just finishing up with this now. And as you can see, things are looking a lot different. Uh, a lot drier, a lot hotter. And it's goodbye to all of these wonderful flowers and things. All these little cereals and uh, it's time to usher in a whole new season. These fields were just teeming with life not so long ago. Tons of insect life, lots of bird life, lots of like little reptiles, snakes, lizards, things like that. Called these fields their home and uh, soon they're gonna have to move on unfortunately and I do feel a little bit bad for them but you know this is a farm. We do grow um, grasses and stuff here for sheep to eat on and this is a process that has to happen. We do have areas like along the hedgerows and in our vineyard and in our orchard and stuff where hopefully these guys can make home and parts like this that don't get cut where they can also move into. First of all, the grass has to sit for a while. The sun's basically gonna take all of the moisture out. Then Joachim's gonna come with a special attachment to rake it up 
And then finally he's going to come with my favorite thing, which I call the hay pooper, which basically rolls them up into big hay bales and then poops them out the back. And uh, after that, all of these fields are going to get um, tilled and they're going to get tilled into a nice fine substrate. And then, uh, yeah, they're going to plant corn and that's going to be our summer crop. I've just seen that Joaquin's wife, Fernanda, is coming past with the sheep. I'm going to try and see if I can catch them in time. And these are some of the sheep that all the fuss is about. All of the grass is basically going to be their summer food. And uh, ah, I gave them a little bit of a fright. And if you watched a video that we put out last week, you'll see when these guys got their hair cut, or these ladies, shall I say. As you can see, they've got some really big udders on them. These are milk sheep. So all of the grass is very important. Oh no! One dia. And uh, this is only a small fraction of them. He has 159 in total. So lots and lots of hungry master feed. I mean, these sheep just eat continuously the whole day long and uh, produce lots and lots and lots of milk for their babies and also for the cheese. And we're nearly there. I think he's only got another two swipes to do. And pretty much all of this, and then going down past the house on that side, going down past the house on that side, is all gonna be cut. And there is a final part that I'll show you a little bit later that's not getting cut today. And actually this field is already done. So you can see it's been tilled and uh, Joaquin's already planted the corn in here. So pretty soon this field's gonna start coming up with green corn shoots. It's gonna happen before obviously these fields. And uh, he's also done the other fields just on this side along here. And the reason that we grow corn isn't for growing corn cobs. It's just for the green stalks. Um, it's full of nutrition. It's also full of water and it's really good for the sheep because in the summertime, it's just so dry and dusty here. The sheep need something to eat. Uh, hay bales are very expensive. This is why, um, you know, this is why we give the hay bales to Joaquin. Um, this is why he works so hard for those hay bales. Now they cost an absolute fortune. And uh, yeah, they also need something else. You know, you have to put them out in pasture. So if you grow corn, you can send them out into the fields. They munch away quite happily on that corn and it keeps them fed. And I just want to add, it keeps them fed when you can't grow anything else because due to fire regulations, you can't um, have grasses and things growing in the fields here in central Portugal while there's like high fire risk. Um, the corn on the other hand doesn't burn because the corn is gonna be grown nice and green. Um, it's not gonna like be given a chance to dry out or anything like that. And uh, yeah, we're not gonna even be irrigating it. It actually grows in this dry, dusty heat without any irrigation in 40 degree summers. So it's a pretty amazing crop. And I think Shrokin's all finished. Oh, he just has to put away these cutters. So he was saying that um, he has to send the blade in to get sharpened uh, before he does this last field, because this last field has actually got lots of moisture in it. And uh, as you can see, these things take a lot of damage. And now he's just staying in the upright position so he can get out the gate and drive down the road safely. Obrigado, Joaquin. Tudo bom. Esta etapa está. And there you have it. Uh, he's going to be coming back to do that very final field. And uh, for now, I'm going to get out of the sun, get something to drink because I'm dying of thirst. And uh, that's it. Wait, that's not it. So obviously we've seen this field over here all nice and cut and let me go and take you to the main section. I'm just going to let the dogs out. Uh, we had them uh, inside because we obviously didn't want them to get tangled up in the blades. Hello. Hello. Come on dogs. Done. Yeah. Well, um, he's done most of it. He has to come back uh, in a few days time to do the rest. So let's see if the dogs notice that there's no grass anymore. Yeah, Eddie's straight on it. Look, he's like, what on earth has happened here? Eddie, what's happened to the grass, my boy? What's happened to the grass? Now, as you can see, we had all of this grass here. It was really tall. And then we've got like the main sort of garden area. And we would have our chickens sort of free ranging around here. And that meant that the predators, like foxes and stuff, mongoose, could all get quite close up in the grass. And then as the chickens walked past, it was a real threat that they could just grab them. Now we can see, well, I wouldn't say for miles, but we, we can see really far and uh, the dogs can see far too. It's going to be a lot safer. And then finally, I want to show you what the bottom field looks like because that's absolutely ridiculous and just completely full of grass. Come on, doggies, hurry up. 
So olive grove that we did earlier, all of this, and now we've got this whole field. And look at this. So I sort of cut sections here just on the side so that we could sit out here. But this is probably the tallest corn on the whole farm. Sorry, did I just call it corn? I mean wheat. I mean, these are like above shoulder height and uh, it looks really healthy and it's a huge field. It's the biggest one that we have. So I think this, he's gonna basically come back here. He's gonna sharpen his blades. So you can see it's a lot greener over here. There's a lot more water because we have a well just up here. And uh, yeah, so that's gonna happen in a few days. Right, time to get inside, grab an ice cold beer, get some lunch and chill.